Hi, I'm Michael Killen. My guest is Brian Schmidt. He's the vice chairman of the Santa Clara County Water District. I want to ask him a series of questions about the great drought, the great water challenges the state of California faces. Brian, how are you today? Great, great. And thank you for coming on and being a guest. And I know that uh, last week you were at an event at NASA Ames called California's Water Search for Sustainability and Resilience. You were in the audience asking questions and you had a chance to observe a, an official from NASA mm -hmm. sharing his remarks about the situation of water and the solutions, I think, and the Secretary of State. And, and then I also spoke. At, I would like to ask some questions, first of all, in a moment, about what those three speakers, what their contributions were. Okay, and then later I want to go and ask some questions about what your organization does. So maybe you'd help us. Uh, would you put it into perspective uh, what happened at that event, what the main speakers, and any particular in important information you d discovered? Sure. I, I think one thing that was interesting about that event was where it was located. It was on the NASA Ames Research Center and at this uh, amazing new building they have, the Sustainability Base where they're doing a really incredibly innovative environmental actions and trying to have a sustainable and high-tech developed structure there. Yeah, but what would in particular uh, excite you about that? Uh, well, one thing that would excite me is that they use 90% less water than, uh, than a building of that size would normally use, and they're recycling some oh. of their water. Oh, good, so, and uh, I imagine your organization your, inter your organization interested in doing more recycling? That's right. We already do some recycling, and we're setting up an advanced water purification center based on the same technology that they're using at NASA Ames and the same technology they're actually using right now on the space station. So uh, was this the first you learned of that? Uh, this was the first time I knew exactly what they had at Sustainability Base. So that was really pretty neat to, to yeah. hear about that and to get a little tour. So. I know a little bit about you, and you wouldn't be the vice chairman of the water district if you weren't somebody who was really aggressive and working extremely hard to help the county. So where are you going to take this information that you just put together? I think the, what we see at NASA, together with what we're trying to do at the water district, shows to me how we can educate the public on the opportunities we have to be more resilient in dealing with water in this, um, this uh, incredible uh, drought that we're facing now, the worst in the recorded history, and that we can overcome the problems and do it in an environmentally responsible manner. Okay, now you answered, you know, I, I grasped to some extent, but could you give us some detail? I mean, I mean what practical uh, thing might come out of you remembering or focusing that you guys are doing uh, recycling and now you find uh, one of the world's great corporate agencies is doing it. Well, one good example of what we could do is that what could very well be the largest source of unused water right now here in the county is the wastewater from mm -hmm. the, what we use in all our showers and sinks and, and toilets. That water is a resource. The vast majority of it we don't use but we could use. It, we use um, total utilization is over 300,000 acre feet. It's an acre of land, foot deep of water. That's a unit of measurement of water. Uh, over 300,000 acre feet used in the county, and over half of that um, usage, 160,000 acre feet, is being used from, is being created from wastewater. We could use that and reduce okay. our dependence. So, do you see yourselves working with NASA? I, I would love to have the opportunity to work on these issues, show what they are doing at Sustainability Base, show what they're doing at the space station, and then show how we can do that here for the 1.8 million people. And, and that would help uh, increase awareness within the county with the voters and funding, So, and that might lead to more support of uh, advancing uh, new water uh, recycling projects in the county. Is, is that your plan? Uh, that's what I think sounds like a really good idea, and I, I, I raised the issue with some folks over there at Ames who seemed interested. Good. I should say it's the 
the water district, I don't make decisions for the water district, but it's, a, it's something I can recommend as part of a group of seven of us. That makes I it. recommend it. All right. It's we'll smart. It is smart to team up with NASA and, and maybe learn from their technology and share technology and then increase awareness because it's good for all of us. I endorse it. All right. <laughs> like that I matter in these particular things. Okay, so that's one thing you learned. But the speaker at, from Ames, uh, he didn't address uh, a possible alliance with your water district. What, what did he say? What he spoke into. What into I, I found, yeah, the, uh, what I found interesting from uh, uh, the speaker from NASA Ames was, you, you think a lot about NASA and doing pure science, and pure science is wonderful entirely on its on its own, but he was talking more about how NASA can do applied science to make human life and make our environment better, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's what he showed a lot about how they can help us understand our local environment. He showed how we can see how the drought is affecting California, um, getting all the way down to the possibility that we can help individual farmers understand how much water their crops need and to make sure they don't use any more than the minimum that they need. Okay, that's good. So most people, including myself, think of NASA as putting things in space, right? That's right. And we, we don't really see much that much of a practical uh, benefit from it. Of course, science advances, et cetera. But that man was saying we can help the Earth. Exactly. Uh, going to Mars is great. I look at all that stuff all the time. Uh, but he's saying on top of that, it's not just advancing knowledge for its own sake, but to help us handle the challenges we face. Okay, so that was valuable. The Secretary of Natural Resources for the state of California was another speaker. He's John Lair. And I, I'm you would agree his job is to protect the natural resources of the state or to see that they are utilized effectively. Would that be fair? Yeah, Secretary Laird, that's his job is to both uh, protect those resources and, and make sure we can utilize those in appropriate benefit for the people of California. In the context of water, what is his position? The position that we're seeing from, from the Secretary in developing issues, the main one they're focusing on is the Bay Delta, the, where the Sacramento and Santa Queen rivers come together. Uh, a very altered and a very problematic, environmentally disturbed river system. Disturbed for what reason? Uh, their problems that they're facing there is, is so much of the habitat has been altered. A lot of the tidal wetlands and upland natural habitats are gone, and the water is gone too, some of it. The habitats have been disturbed because of development, because of taking too much water out. Are those the two main, or is there another one? Uh, and because of not so much development for cities, but conversion of wetlands, diking them off behind levees and converting them into farms. Oh, agriculture. Yeah, oh. yeah, there's a lot of so agriculture agri there. So it's the expansion of agriculture or new approaches, and it is taking too much water. Is that it? And then there's the other issues. There, there are other issues as well, but that's one. And then the other major one is all the water we've pulled out of the river. Um, the species need that as well. Okay. Now, it seems to me certain parts of this state are really suffering from a drought. And other parts, you know, I've just I did a survey of uh, farmers mm -hmm. in uh, even places like Fresno, uh, San Luis Obispo, Watsonville, etc. A lot of them are not hurting, and I, I ask them, and they say, well, we have wells, okay? But then there seems to be a great swath of farmers in the Central Valley that are really suffering. So they need water, and uh, so more from the Delta? What would help us here? So most of the water that's taken out from the Delta goes to those farmers, but a lot of it also goes to urban agencies, and that includes us at Santa Clara County, um, that we get about 40% of our water supply comes from the Bay Delta, the water to serve 1.8 million people of Silicon Valley. So, uh, so the idea that Secretary Laird talked about last Thursday was to try and balance um, protecting the habitat while also getting a secure and stable water supply coming from the Delta. How do you do that? What 
he is suggesting is that you can actually restore some of the habitat that was a half million acres, 500,000 acres of wetland habitat have been lost. They're talking about restoring 145,000 of those acres. And by doing that, they think that we can take water and still benefit the species. So you can take all the water that the Central Valley needs and urban areas need, and fixing the, the habitat, does that mean they they need water for that? Uh, as the process of fixing the habitat, of like taking um, land that had been farmed and turning it back into wetlands, which is some of what will happen. Yeah, there would be some water usage involved with that. Um, and I think it, what the sec Secretary Laird is trying to find a balance. So maybe the farms aren't going to get all the water. Actually, I can guarantee that. They're not going to get all the water that they would want. And maybe we're not going to get all the water we might want too. He thinks he's found a balance. Not everyone might agree with him. And whether the costs work out is, is something to okay. figure out as well. So am I correct in California, the, the state of California controls some of the water distribution and the federal government. That's right. And before we got on this show, you informed me that one of the main reasons the federal government is involved, it funded uh, distribution and other processes related to water, so they have a say. And then I was reading in the New York Times that in Congress that the Republican Party wants to just simply say, give the farmers all the water they want, period. And you correct me, I mean, you live these things much more than me, and, and the Democrats are saying, no, we have to make a more balanced, uh, be concerned with the, the environment, and okay. Am I correct in how I, uh, okay? Yeah, that's a, I mean, you're, you're trying to simplify okay. it as you have to, and, and, but yes, generally the, re, the Republican Party has introduced a bill, it actually passed the House saying that more water needs to be taken out of the Sacramento River, and if that causes harm to endangered species and make them extinct, then, then that's too bad for the endangered species. Okay, now, when Congress, and assuming the Senate, does, if they were to pass that, that is the prominent prim, uh, the law that will dictate what happens here. Would that be correct? That would be the case. I think there is no chance the Senate yes. will pass it or, or President Obama will allow uh, it. To okay, come good. Did Lair make any other uh, remarks that especially you found especially interesting or important? I, I thought the one overall remark he was saying and what they're doing in this process of trying to figure out how to balance environment and water withdrawals from the Delta is that they're redoing that whole process that the federal government you mentioned the state did 50, 40 to 60 years ago developing this water system without any concern for the environment. Now they're trying to figure out how to work in a concern for the environment. Okay, so, uh, now tell me, I'm going to try to paraphrase how you categorize both speakers. The NASA speaker mostly presented NASA solutions and made an emphasis on we can use the science that we've developed to apply it and to help, in the case of the drought, farmers more uh, optimally utilize water for their crops. And then Lair sort of gave a mixture of uh, water policies, requirements, uh, and, and to promote what we need to not just provide water for the, uh, the farmers and others that need the water, but at the same time, we need to reestablish the wetlands, you know, environmental issues. Would that be it? Yes, I think that's a pretty good description. Okay, and, and now I was there, and you know, I'm a little too close to the situation, I gave a speech. What did I cover, and, and what was one or two interesting points I made? Well, I thought what made the event really interesting was that you were the wild card in, in that type of uh, presentation and, and way of thinking. Um, as, because, and you expressed that yourself, that the scientists are working off of, off of logic, and they're trying to be, trying to hold themselves back as much as possible. And I think you can say that in water policy, at least ideally, you're trying to do the same thing. Um, 
and try and just let, let logic guide what you're trying to do. But what you've done through your art, it seems, is to operate on a very different level, dealing with the same challenges, but managing them and wrestling with them on an okay. intuitive level. Okay. Now, I like that you brought that up. And I would, I want to right now give an example of it, how I opened my speech, because okay. I addressed that issue. And I was wondering if my camera crew could focus on me, and I'm going to share my opening remarks at the uh, NASA event. I stood up there, and I looked out at the audience, and I said, first, I want to thank the officials at NASA Ames for inviting me to speak here. And I also am honored that I'm on the same platform speaking as the Secretary of Natural Resources of the State of California, John Lair. And then I said, I want to share something personal and confidential before I give my speech. It's about my wife. As I was getting ready to give my speech here, my wife came into my studio and she looked at my painting that was up on the wall and she said, will that be the painting that will be behind all this, the speakers who speak? I said, yes, it'll be behind Laird, it'll be behind me. And she said, by the way, what is that part of your painting up there that, you know, there's some, some object? And I, I explained to her what it was. And she looked a little quizzical. And then she said, what's that? What's that one over there? And I s s explained to her what it was, and I said, you know, I've sat back and I've thought about the great developments of this state, climate change and the drought and other developments, and those are the thoughts that came to mind, and that's why they're on the painting. And her face looked in pain, and she says, Michael, look, you, got, you have to do something. You have to tell the audience that what you have painted painted is not logic. It is an emotional interpretation of what you see and feel happening in the world. You have to tell the audience it's not logic. So ladies and gentlemen, what, what I painted here and what I'm going to decode shortly is not logic, but I hope it benefits you. And I think you were there and, and uh, I want to share, my wife was in the audience. Oh. And uh, when she said, when she heard me say, I'm going to say something personal, <laughs> and it's her, she went, oh, my God, the <laughs> wild card, the crazy man. Who knows what in the world? But I think it, uh, it was part of taking a different approach of grabbing the attention of the audience that the NASA official, the secretary, would not use. Would you agree? Right. It's resetting the people's framework from let's be as logical about this to understanding on a symbolic. Yes. And I explain them, this is going to be all emotional. I would like to ask some questions about the Santa Clara County. Santa Clara oh, Valley. The Santa Clara Valley, which is the same as the Santa Clara County same in, in terms of geographic. 1.7 million people, did you say? About 1.8 million people. Might be a little more now. Uh, um, <laughs> an hour from now, too. And uh, what is the mission? And maybe you could define it in, or articulate it in maybe three different, every, every organization has a few different, what, what are yours? So the Santa Clara Valley Water District has three missions. It's to provide water supply for, for the entire county um, as a wholesaler. Uh, it is to do flood protection through the county. And it is to, to do environmental restoration and especially watershed restoration. In okay. The county. okay, so earlier you informed me in the audience that much, 40% of the water comes from the Delta. Okay, yes. so that's part of the process of uh, getting water, right? Uh, just quickly, where does the rest of the water come from that you collect and then distribute? Sure, about a third of the water is local from our local rains. So that water either gets into the groundwater or we have 10 reservoirs 
so the reservoirs catch the, catch the water coming down from streams. Uh, about 15% of the water is from the San Francisco Public Utility Commission, the Hetch Hetchy water. That, that serves parts of the county along the bay and North County, like Palo Alto. So, okay, wonderful. So uh, I now have a better understanding. You're a wholesaler. Yes. And you go out and acquire the water from up in heaven and from the delta and a little bit from Hetch Hetchy. And, and then you gather it together. You clean it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we'll treat the water. Uh, a lot of the water is groundwater, uh, which needs almost no treatment. So you have drill, you, you drill down and pump it up, is that what you? Yeah, we both bring, we'll bring some of that water from the Bay Delta and store it in the ground. We store twice as much water underground as we do in our reservoirs. It doesn't evaporate that way. Oh, oh really, that is quite interesting. Okay, and then uh, I'd just like to go back to NASA. So you're bringing in this water and then water gets used and it comes back and it needs to be purified or whatever and, and so you're thinking about working possibly with NASA and on uh, reusable water. Yeah, that's there's, uh, there's a, an advanced water treatment system for water that's been used. It's called reverse osmosis, mm -hmm. pushing uh, contaminated water through a membrane, pure water comes out the other side. They have it at NASA we are building a, a very large system in, in North San Jose by Alviso and how we could get eventually to a point of uh, making it into drinking water. So recycling water would, imp would help uh, with the resilience, sustainability of the water supply without having to go reaching up into the delta so much or Hetch Hetchy or it, it doesn't come down that much. You. Uh, you would be uh, providing us a more sustainable source of water. Is that the plan? Yeah, it's an extremely reliable and local source of water. And if we can get the public to understand why it's safe and environmentally usable, I think it can stop a overuse of another type of water supply called desalination, which I think has a lot of environmental issues involved with it. That's seeding the water? Uh, desalination? The, that's one way of getting it is distilling it. But or membranes again. Yeah, ironically, it's the same technology, but it's much more energy intensive uh, oh. to get to turn ocean water into drinking water. Okay, and then you're concerned with the floods. Yes. Uh, and, and that's from the water coming down primarily from uh, the Santa Cruz Mountains? Yes, and, and the Mount Hamilton Range as well. The Mount Range. So, uh, yeah, the, we want water, but not too much water. And sometimes we get too much water, a combination of, say, a week of steady rain and then a big storm. That Then the ground is soaked, then a big storm comes in, and the ground can't take any more water, and it, it, it storms in with a flood. Our floods are short, 12 hours or so, but they can still, still be a problem, causing many millions of dollars of damages. Seems to me there's a disconnect. I can understand an organization that brings, brings us water to use, but then you're also concerned with flooding, which uh, seems to be a different function, but it's only connected by water, I guess. Is that? Well, the, the, how we got started many decades ago was that they were pumping so much water for use um, in the valley that the land was sinking. It was subsiding down. And if the land is sinking, then the, the streams don't have the same gradient of flow into the bay. They can't flow into the bay if the land they're flowing into is itself sunk. So there was a, there was a, a relationship that they realized many decades ago between overuse and overpumping and flood, flood, flooding problems. So parts of uh, San Jose are below sea level right now. Oh. And now we have climate change and sea level rise as an issue as well. Okay, I might, if we have another min few minutes, I might come back to that. I'd just like to touch a little bit more. The last is recycling. Was that? Oh, no. Uh, environmental, environmental habitat. And could you give me an example of what your organi organization is doing to help uh, improve the habitat, the environment, etc.? What, what programs do you have? Sure. Um, one example might be we're here in Palo Alto uh, filming this, and San, Fr San Francisco Creek is the border between Palo Alto and Menlo Park in East Palo Alto. And we're helping uh, making that cre creek 
protected from a 100-year flood from Highway 101 downstream to the bay. We're widening the creek and turning more of it into a natural wetland area. If it's okay. wider, more of a flood can go through, and it's, it's great habitat. Okay. Now, I just thought I heard you say, you're filming here? That's one of your solutions? Uh, or what, what, not, we're not filming. We're, we're, we're widening Oh, creek. widening. So, th right. so there's more room for flooding is the oh. idea. That's interesting. We're almost finished now. So let's see. At the NASA event, uh, I think I quoted the governor saying, uh, Jerry Brown said climate change is the greatest threat to the state. That, did that ring true? That rings true to, to me and especially to the work I see at a water district. All those three issues, water supply, flood control, environmental restoration, all are harmed by climate change. Good. And then I, I quoted the governor again uh, that he was in NASA May in May of last year. And he sent all the engineers, scientists, and academics. You know, Paul Ehrlich was there, a whole lot of folks. And he said to them, you're not doing enough. <laughs> the concentration of greenhouse gases keeps increasing. And your solutions are not solving it and I want new approaches from you and he also told everyone to become activists in other words if you're an academic and you're teaching something go out and go and persuade and the same for the engineers and and uh, I found that interesting and from what you know about what the governor is saying does that ring true? I think that does ring true it's an example of what we've done at the water district we've done climate divestment we're we have set up a policy to not buy fossil fuel company investments. Oh, I would have liked to chat, but we're running out of time. My guest has been Brian Schmidt. He's the vice chairman of the Santa Clara Valley Water District. And he's been a wonderful guest, and I, I'm glad to get to know him better. Okay. Now, I think we have a couple more minutes. Okay.